the Oklahoma City Thunder CSGA dropped 30 plus points in back to back games, getting overtime win over the Indiana Pacers. And they're able to secure this win with SGA leading the charge. And there was a lot, and I mean a lot of discussion surrounding the Josh Giddy and SGA pairing throughout the last couple of hours. We're going to talk about all that coming up on today's Locked On Thunder podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network, your teams every day. You are Locked On Thunder, your daily Oklahoma City Thunder podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Let's get it going on the Locked On Thunder podcast, on the Locked On Podcast Network, your teams every day. I'm your host, Ryland Styles. You can follow me on Twitter at Rylan underscore Styles. You can follow the show on Twitter at LO Thunderpod. Even email the show, LO Thunderpod at gmail.com. On today's show, we will dive into the Oakland City Thunder taking on the Indiana Pacers, winning the overtime game 129 to 125 as SGA puts up his second straight 30 point night on the second night. Are they back-to-back? Trey Mann looks great next to Shea. Pokashevsky, Tail Malon look great in the bench unit and earn the Thunder this win. But this game can only be explained by starting with the game overview to really put into context how the Thunder, led by SGA, won this game. Josh Giddy was a late scratch with hip soreness of this game. Obviously, uh, he was such a late scratch that he wasn't even on the 330 injury report. So this happened in the early stages of getting to the arena, having pregame workouts and shoot arounds and things like that. Uh, so it does not seem like too big of a deal. Uh, just some soreness in his hip. Lou Dort out with a shoulder injury. Ty Jerome out. Matt Muscala out with that ankle injury. Kenny Hustle out as well. And then Jerry, of course, out with that foot injury dating back to February. Uh, I think it was third, February 3rd. The team announced he'd be out for six weeks until his reevaluation date. And so we're still in the midst of that. Now, Derek Favors did not play because this was the second night of a back-to-back. It was a second night of a back-to-back, and it was a home road back-to-back where they played in Oklahoma City on Thursday and then traveled and played in Indiana on Friday. Not a terrible home road back-to-back, but still a travel was included in the back-to-back for this team. And in doing so, with all these injuries and with the back-to-back situation, Lindy Waters the third and Olivier Saar, the two two-way players, played over 20 minutes for the Thunder. The Pacers, though, were also without T.J. Warren, Chris Duarte, T.J. McCollum, and Miles Turner. The Thunder start out with SGA, Trey Mann, Wiggins, Baisley, and Roby. The Pacers start with Buddy Heald, Therese Halliburton, uh, Malcolm Brogdon, uh, O'Shea Brissett, and Isaiah Jackson. But the big thing from tonight was Shea, Gillis Alexander going for back-to-back 30-point nights. In this game, all the qualifiers... Second night of back-to-back, home road back-to-back. He plays 38 minutes in overtime. He scores 36 points, five assists, eight rebounds, two blocks. Does have the seven turnovers. He took 24 shots tonight. And and this is the first piece of this whole Shea, Josh, Giddy pairing, on-ball, off-ball situation. SGA is playing without Josh Giddy. He's playing without Lou Dort. He's playing without a couple shooters in Ty Jerome and Mike Muscala. He's playing without Kenny Hustle. He's playing without Jerry and Derek Favors. And he attempts 24 shots today. 24 shots today in 38 minutes. Day before, when Josh Shady was playing, he attempted 22 shots in regulation and played four fewer minutes. He played four fewer minutes against the Suns and shot 22 times He played four more minutes against the Pacers and shot 24 times in overtime of a tight game that the Thunder uh, were trying to win desperately. Shea is still getting his touches. Shea is still getting his opportunities. Shea is still scoring 32 points and 36 points on back-to-back nights. He goes one for five from the floor, from the three. He goes 54% from the floor. Nine for 12 at the line. He lived at the free throw line because of how incredible he is at getting to the rim. His rim finishing tonight was on another planet, which is saying a lot because SGA is typically an elite rim finisher. And in this game, you really saw SGA 
look like a superstar. He controlled his pacing well. He controlled his body well. He sealed off defenders and got them on his hip well. Uh, he did everything he needed to do and was very, very animated in this game, complaining with to the refs multiple times. He got some superstar calls at times in this game, and he was just an animated player down the stretch of this game when the Thunder were trying to win. And he looked awesome. And he's been awesome all season long. The only thing that, that has happened this year is – the three-point percentage has gone down as he's trying to uh, find that step back and tinker with things from beyond the arc. That's gone down from last year, and he got hurt. But besides that, he's still playing at the max contract level that you're paying him to play at. He's still the same guy who, less than a few months ago, everybody was excited to build the franchise around. You do not trade a guy like Shea Gittes Alexander, who's on a five-year deal, a max contract with zero opt-outs. I'll say it once more. This is the NBA. The drama will find you. The disgruntled stars will find you. They're not shy about it. Players are quick to try to leave scenarios they don't want to be in. And it's okay to have two really good things. I know you're always waiting for that other shoe to drop. I know you're always worrying about what the future of this franchise looks like. You want to see this team get back to title contention. You want to just relive those days of years past where every year you're expected to win a title. And you go to deep playoff runs and things like that. And you want to figure out how to get there. And you worry about draft lottery odds and trades that you can make and future assets and worrying about how the team meshes together. They haven't even played a full season yet together. You don't need to make the judgment right now. You have five years with no opt-outs of SGA. You have Josh Giddy on his rookie contract. Do not go looking for drama. If they ever want to break this duo up, if SGA gets tired of playing with Josh Giddy or vice versa, they're going to let you know about it. It's the NBA in 2022. They have TikTok. They have Twitter. They have media sources that they can go to and, and, and leak stories to. They have agents who will do their dirty work for them. Players are no strangers to getting out of situations they don't want to be in. So we can only take it at face value. We can only judge this duo on what they say publicly and what they do on the basketball floor. And they say all the right things publicly. And on the basketball floor, you can clearly envision a way for SJ and Josh Giddy to thrive together and lead a championship-level ball club. And that's the bottom line. Now, in a year, will SGA say, you know what? I'm sick of playing any off-ball possessions. I want to be on ball and be this James Harden-type role where I'm never passing uh, like he did in Houston, and just run the show from start to finish and build this team around me with just competent shooters, and I'll figure it out. That could happen. He also, though, could say, man, I love playing with Josh Giddy, and I want this to work for the next 20 years, and let's figure this out and play together and lead this team to a title. You just don't know. And so you cannot predict personality. What you can predict is personnel. And can this personnel work on the floor and win you a title at absolutely can. It will take time for SGA to grow with Josh Giddy, but this entire time since the Paul George trade, since we've seen SGA in an Oklahoma City jersey, what we've been holding on to as Thunder fans is, wow, number one, this guy is much better than anyone ever thought. Number two, wow, this guy could be an all-star. And number three, wow, this guy who could be a top 15 player in the NBA make Sam Presti's job so much easier because he's a chameleon that can change his colors to match whatever player he needs to match and blend in with any team and superstar he needs to blend in with and to help you win, no matter what personnel you bring in. And so at pick six, when all was lost and the sky was falling, somehow Sam Presti salvaged a blue chip prospect in a five-player draft. And SGA can reward you for that because of how great he is. The 12th time this season, he scored over 30 points. 
It's the most times he's done that in a single season in his entire career. That's happened while playing with Josh Giddy. Folks, they've barely shared the floor together. In the grand scheme of things, the amount of times that SGA and Josh Giddy have been on the floor together is relatively nothing. It's relatively nothing. We've got to give them time to grow. I know that we want everything done in a hurry. We want to live in this microwave society. We want to judge things right now. We want to be the first out there with the right answer. And so you might think the right answer is, well, obviously they're going to have to trade SGA because the Thunder can never keep good players and can never keep stars. And so you want to be the first one to say that. So that way, if it does happen, you can say, see, I told you so. I never got my hopes up. I'm right. You're wrong. You might be scared to open up your heart again to the Thunder to have two great generational superstars because of what's happened in the past. Either way, you don't have to have all the answers right now. You don't have to make a decision right now. Sam Presti doesn't. SGA doesn't. Josh Giddy doesn't. I don't. The media doesn't. The fans don't. Nobody does. But you especially do not have to condemn or, or crown this pairing over 3,128 possessions. You can give them time to grow together. Do not go looking for drama. Let the drama find you. And if SGA decides this summer he never wants to play Josh Giddy again, we'll get on the podcast minutes later and discuss it but we're not going to go search out drama and search out problems. You can't predict personality, but you can predict personnel. And the personnel between Josh Giddy and SGA have a clear blueprint that can win this team titles with the right pieces around them. And so it's up to Sam Presti, who once again gets praised by LeBron after the game by saying he does a phenomenal job to figure out a way to move and build this team together. Now, coming up, we're going to dive into Pokoshevsky, Tail Maldon, Trey Mann, and the rest of this Thunder team as they get a big win over the Indiana Pacers without Josh Giddy and with SGA dropping over 30 points in overtime. It's a lot of adversity, back-to-back, home road, back-to-back, things like that. But I do want to tell you about our good friends over at Truebill. Do you know why free trials renew without your consent? It's a business scam to get you out of your money. So do not let these greedy corporations pocket your money. Download Truebill and take control of your subscriptions. Truebill is a new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you do not need, want, or simply forgot about. On average, people save up to $720 per year with Truebill because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel, Truebill makes it incredibly simple. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. And your Truebill concierge is there when you need them to cancel unwanted subscriptions so you don't have to. Truebill has over 2 million users and helps them save $100 million. Like Matthew B, who says, quote, in a matter of minutes, I save $660 for the year on my DirecTV bill. I save $120 for the year on my Sirius XM bill. I save $940 a year on my car insurance, unquote. So do not fall for subscription scams anymore and start canceling today at Truebill.com and use the Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA link to get yourself uh, a huge startup right now. Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. That's Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. Truebill.com. Truebill.com. Slash locked on MBA. It can save you thousands of dollars a year at truebill.com slash locked on MBA. Now, I want to say right now about our good friends over at betonline.net. Football's over, but basketball is going in full steam, both pro and college hoops. From the latest odds, totals, player props to where the next fired coach is going to land, betonline.net is the number one spot. For all of your sports betting needs, betonline.net remains the best spot for all the sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. 
it's not just basketball, but online.net has hockey, boxing, UFC, and even Olympic coverage and information. So head to the website today or go on your mobile device and learn more about the trends and in action at betonline.net, where the game starts. We are back on the Locked On Thunder Podcast, on the Locked On Podcast Network, your teams every day. Thank you for making Locked On Thunder your first listen every single morning, every single day. We're here for you talking Thunder basketball. But make sure you go check out the Lockdown Now podcast, a nightly recap show of every NBA game with a breakdown from our local experts. It's free and available across all platforms and wherever else you get your podcast from, including on YouTube. So go check it out with the Lockdown Now podcast. And we're also on YouTube and on all other podcatchers. And we're also free and available every single day, wherever you get podcasts from. Let's continue diving into this game with the Thunder against the Pacers and the Thunder win in overtime. We've discussed SGA's phenomenal game, 36 points, five assists, eight rebounds, two blocks. That was incredible at the line 12 times there and had great rim finishes and even had the clutch and one. But Pokashevsky, really in control of this game, really made some nice plays off the dribble to get to the rim, get behind the defense, scores 13 points, two assists, a rebound, 66% from the floor, one for three, from three-point land in 18 minutes. And this bench unit that included Pokashevsky, Tail Maldon, Lindy Waters, Olivier Saar, like this bench unit carried this game and got this team back in it and allowed this team to take this to overtime and eventually win the contest. It was strange, but as a duo between Pokashevsky and Tail Maldon, two guys drafted in the 2020 draft and drafted together, this was one of their best games if you had to power rank it, even going back to last year, whenever they got a ton of minutes, remember last year, Malvon led the team in minutes and Pokashevsky got the second half of the year after the G league bubble, almost all to himself. Right. And had that Clippers game that ends up costing you some draft position, but nonetheless has that Clippers game. That was incredible for him. If you go back and power rank on a, on a slideshow, all these two guys' best games, this Pacers game's right up there. Again, Poku goes well for 13 points, two assists, a rebound, 66% from the floor. Tail Malvon, one of his better games with 18 minutes played, with four points, three assists, four rebounds, 50% from the floor, three for five from three. And I know that, you know, a, a single game plus minus does not matter, and a single game plus minus on the box score uh, does not mean everything. But just a context of how this bench unit, which featured mainly OKC Blue players, really did shape the comeback and really did, uh, you know, kind of propel the Thunder to this win. Tell Malmon, a plus six in this game in the plus minus category. And that group really led the Thunder to be able to push this game to overtime and eventually allow them to win the game in overtime. What a weird overtime it was, by the way. Not a single stoppage until like under a minute to play in overtime. And there was a lot of missed shots and things like that as well. But still, it was just weird to see and interesting to see NBA players get to play just an up and down rhythm based game where, where there's just no stoppages. It was it was weird though. You're not used to seeing that in, in the NBA. Uh, but Trey Mann, 22 points, four rebounds, five assists, two steals, 50% from three, including a 30 footer, 47% from the floor, three for four at the line, no turnovers tonight. Uh, as somebody who did bring the ball to the floor a few times, that's still impressive. He had the great assist to Shea at the end of the game. It's an and one uh, to really help the Thunder down the stretch. And he said of that play afterwards, I saw Shea cutting. I threw it to him, and he does what he does. It, it was it was awesome to see kind of just how fun this team's been all year and how they're all kind of meshing together personality-wise. And Trey Mann was a huge source of the offense, and he needed to pick up the slack. I mean, you just go back and, and read about who was out. Josh Giddy, huge, huge source of offense. Lou Dort on any given night, can score 20-plus points and, and can light it up from three. Ty Jerome, huge off the bench in certain spurts. Mike Muscala, a reliable bench veteran. Kenny Hustle, it's like 15 minutes, you know, 15 points a night that you're missing uh, from Kenny Hustle and, and even more in, in a more, you know, kind of expanded role than just his bench role. Uh, this year, he's averaging seven points per night on average, but again, uh, he has these nights where he scores 15 off the bench and, and really helping in this game it was one that he would have made a huge impact in. And of course, a Jerry that you're down as a starter as well, who's good down low. And Trey Mann 
just continues to score and a great clip. And it was interesting to see how Trey Mann balanced out with SGA because we always talk about the pairing of Josh Giddy and SGA for good reason. These are your two blue chip stars. But more interestingly enough, or, or more interesting than that, I think is the pairing with SGA and Trey Mann sharing the floor. Because to me, it's pretty clear. Josh Giddy is your main point guard. His ability to set up and create space for SGA is only going to make him a better bucket getter, uh, SGA that is, and it helps both pairings and it helps both, both players. With Trey Mann, now you're getting into the scenario of you have two guys who are ball dominant and create for themselves and others with the ball in their hand. Josh Giddy creates for himself and others with the ball in his hand looking to pass. These two guys create space for each other uh, and for their teammates and themselves looking to score. And so how do they balance each other out? How can you get these minutes together with these two guys? Obviously, SGA is a lead at it, and, and, and Trey Mann's kind of coming into his own as a rookie, but it's it's not as cut and clear as to how these two should play together as it is with Josh Giddy, because Josh Giddy is not as good off the ball, and he's never going to be as good off the ball as SGA is. Josh Giddy in his career will never be a good off ball player. He just won't. Uh, you know, you're hoping he shoots league average from three. What Josh Giddy's elite at, his elite NBA traits that make him a blue chip prospect and a player who can be a number one option on a title team is his ability to set others up. And off of that comes good looks for himself as well, but setting others up and understanding the context of the system and, and, and the kind of uh, nuances of defenses and how to shred them. And so that's Josh Giddy's game. The way that this pairing is going to work, if it does work, when it does work, Will be SGA on it will be SGA off ball, Josh Giddy on ball as the point guard, and they figure out a balance off of that. Where there's still some possessions where SGA is the point guard and an ISO score, but there's more possessions where Josh Giddy is a point guard. Where it's not so cut and dry is Trey Mann and SGA because they do similar things. SGA loves to get to the rim on the ball, drive and kick. Trey Mann loves those step backs, finesse plays where he's scoring from distance with the ball in his hands, and that opens up space for other people. And it worked out on that transition play where Trey Mann pulls out in transition, SGA cuts in transition, Trey finds him, SGA gets uh, a foul and one, and it's a huge momentum swing for the Thunder. And so how these two play together will be very interesting whenever you see them together in different moments this season the rest of the way. Uh, it's interesting. Trey Mann's been awesome this year. SGA's elite, so we'll see how that goes down the stretch. Now, We'll talk about the rest of this game and how the Thunder won coming up. But first, I want to say right now, our good friends over at Built Bar. Built Bar is a fantastic protein bar that tastes just like a candy bar. Go to BuiltBar.com, use the promo code LOCK15, get 15% off of your next order. Built Bar is great because normally by now, I've forgotten about my New Year's resolutions. We're no longer doing what we should be doing when it comes to that sort of thing. But Built Bar is keeping me on track because... It's a healthy option. It's a great option. Uh, and they have so much variety. A lot of the times when you choose to eat healthy, you're choosing repetition. You're choosing the same flavors. You're choosing the same taste. You're choosing the same bland stuff, but not with Built Bar. Built Bar is an amazing protein bar that is great for you. And it tastes like a candy bar. It's great for a snack. It's great for a meal replacement. It's great pre-workout or post-workout. It's fantastic. Most Built Bars contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 grams of net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Compare that to a candy bar, which is around 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and a dozen net carbs. Built Bar is clearly the way to go. Choose Built Bar like I have with their amazing flavors, mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, coconut brownie chunk. Uh, this month is white chocolate cookies and cream, which is phenomenal because my favorite flavor is just cookies and cream. And so you know I'm all over that white chocolate cookies and cream. Again, I use them as a meal replacement. I use them as a snack. I use them as pre-workout and post-workout fuel. Check them out today, built.com. Promo code LOCK15, 15% 15 off of your next order. We are back on the Locked On Thunder podcast, on the Locked On Podcast Network, your teams every day. Thank you for making Locked On Thunder your first listen every single morning, every single day. We're here for you talking Thunder basketball. For your second listen, go check out Locked On NBA. It's the Locked On experts covering the league from all angles, Monday through Friday, in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available across all platforms, and sometimes I hop on there as well. 
to give the breakdown on the Thunder uh, and what's happening with this team. But let's continue wrapping up this game against the Pacers. Olivier Saar missed two dunks, had four rebounds, two assists, five fouls. Again, he's a guy that the Thunder did sign to a uh, to a two-way deal, but unlike the Thunder, uncharacteristic of the Thunder, uh, this is a two-way deal that just doesn't make a ton of sense, and it's just kind of a throwaway move. It's kind of like a Paul Watson Jr. type of two-way deal where, yeah, he's on the team, eventually he's going to get waived, and he's going to get replaced by another two-way guy. Because while he presents a new lineup option for the Thunder, and while he presents something they don't have right now as a traditional seven-footer at center, he still fouls a lot, five fouls, which takes him out of being able to be a better defender than most players in this roster. And his offensive bag is just not very deep at all. And so there's just not really many ways and edges to get him in the NBA. Whenever you look at if a player can make it to the NBA, to me, I look at NBA traits, and he just doesn't have any. Like Lindy Waters, his NBA trait is shooting. If he can build off of his shooting, then he can be an NBA player. But he at least has that baseline. He at least has that tree trunk. Now, let's find some branches off Lindy Waters' tree. And that's why Lindy Waters' two-way deal is a two-year two-way deal. Because the Thunder want to give him time in summer league and on July 7th through 17th in the preseason next year, throughout the regular season next year, to grow off of his NBA trait. And to me, Saar just doesn't have NBA traits. Isaiah Roby plays well, 10 points, 4 assists, 11 rebounds, 50% from the floor, 4 for 4 at the line. Buddy Heald was awesome for the Kings. I mean, for, not for the Kings. He used to play for the Kings. For the Pacers, he had a 10-0 run by himself, if you include scoring and assisting, to start this contest. Uh, 29 points, 5 assists, 7 rebounds, a steal, a block, 50% uh, from the floor, uh, 57% from the floor, 55% from three. Love what we saw from Buddy Heald. And then the question just becomes, how did the Thunder win this game? Well, this is actually a very entertaining game. Now, granted, it's between two teams at the bottom of the NBA and two teams who are in our tanking category of our All-Star Break roundtables, which you can hear on this podcast uh, last Wednesday and on the, on the Locked NBA show today. Uh, you know, it's between two tanking teams, but each team's biggest lead was 10 points. 13 times the lead changed hands. 11, uh, 11 times it was tied. The Thunder win 29, 129 to 125. The Thunder out-rebound Indy by two. They had assist Indy by two. They have four fewer turnovers. The Thunder have 10 more points in the paint. The Thunder have 15 fewer second chance points. The Thunder have four fewer fast break points. And the bench was outscored by nine for the Thunder. Indy also scored one more point off turnovers. The Thunder had six players in double figures. The Pacers had seven. The Thunder shot 47% from the floor, 35% from three, 25% from the line. Compare that to the Pacers, who shot 49% from the floor as well, 37% from three, and 59% the line. And you can see how the Thunder won at the free throw line in this game. Bet of the day was OKC plus eight. That cashed in. Moneyball pick was SGA. It was actually Trey Mann that takes home the Moneyball honors in this one. And I'm going to pick SGA as the MVP tonight. 36 points, five assists, eight rebounds, three steals, two blocks in 38 minutes. On the second night of back-to-back, -back, coming off of injury, uh, and he's able to step up and get this overtime win for the Oklahoma City Thunder. So make sure you subscribe across all platforms to never miss a Lockdown Thunder podcast, which is all free, five days a week, Monday through Friday, and we even have bonus podcasts along the way. Another jam-packed week coming up on Monday. We're going to have a mailbag episode. So tweet, so tweet me your uh, questions at Ryland underscore Styles. I'll be able to answer them on Monday's show. If you don't have Twitter, email LLThunderPod at gmail.com. Tuesday, we're going to recap that Kings game. Wednesday, we're looking to do a draft podcast about the NBA draft coming up with March Madness on the horizon. It'll be March the 2nd. Even going to hope to have Richard Stamen hop on the podcast as well to talk about the draft. And Thursday, we're going to have a Nuggets recap podcast. And Friday, we're going to do another episode of Stock Watch. And then Saturday, a bonus podcast recapping that Wolves game. And then that completes the week because on Monday, or the following week on March 7th, to recap the, the Jazz game. So a lot to dive into. Very busy here at Locked on Thunder. Subscribe for free across all platforms so you never miss a show. And until Monday, be good and be good to one another.